two are the main fields in our century, that the 21st century, informatics and biology. And this will have effect in biotechnology, artificial life, molecular electronics, and nanotechnology. And the fields of health, informatics, robotics, communications, nutrition, energy production and distribution will be influenced. So we're dealing with infinite small designs and infinitely complex. This is the positive side. What is the negative? Within this context, we have pollution, we have uh, weapons, intelligent weapons, and science and scientists behave as criminals in a common panel of economical code. Maybe they exist justified wars, but they do not exist innocent weapons. In a similar way, there are no sciences which are truly innocent. The problem is that the scientific world is trying to solve complex problems which have no impact in the progress of humanity. If we go back to our philosophers and we look at Socrates' idea, everything investigated why, the important thing here is that there were two kinds of knowledge, technical and ethical. Now, ethical knowledge really stops to exist. Technical knowledge must be subjugated to ethical knowledge. Ethical knowledge is the knowledge of the bad and the good, and unfortunately, currently, our universities only teach the technical knowledge. The same uh, with Aristotle's ideas. The aim, the aim of the humanity is to live and act as a way to reach the supreme good, which is the bliss, and bliss is reached living with virtue. So going now from these old ideas to intelligence, what is intelligence? Faculty of adapting oneself to circumstances. Some of the things that you're gonna see here, you saw it already. And what is most important here is multiple intelligence. That people can have multiple intelligence and multiple intelligence means that somebody could be in logistics and mathematics, in a natural a scientist, somebody have any knowledge in music, and uh, some people could be authors in uh, verbal and linguistic, and some people can combine all these knowledges. Here, I'm going to make a distinction in academic terms between artificial intelligence and computational intelligence, which I'll, is the title of my topic. Artificial intelligence was founded back in 1950s. They mimic cognitive functions. Is the field of computer science that deals with the design of intelligent computer systems. They design implementation of programs. Computational intelligence is much later, and it was first introduced by Besdek in 1992. It involves three main areas, three fields, neural networks, which is the most important with deep learning, fuzzy logic, and evolution computation. It was defined as a set of algorithms based on physical processes. What computational intelligence deals with has to deal with complex and changing environments. This is something very difficult that AI cannot do. And basic is the analysis of data. So as we call computational intelligence based on soft computing methods, it, and it has two main characteristics, adaptivity and self-organization, where artificial intelligence is just another computer language based on rules, and it works well 
when the rules are well known, like a chess, and in a confined environment. But the common goal is to approach the general intelligence. Moral intelligence. How to distinguish good from evil and respect the values of other human beings. So virtues that we have in moral intelligence is empathy, consciousness, self-control, respect, kindness, and tolerance. These are all uh, virtues of ethics and justice. So ethics of computation intelligence is the part of ethics of technology concerning robots and other artificial intelligence. Uh, since today, computational intelligence systems are not ethical, it's not clear what exactly consider ethical about them, and we can divide it into machine ethics, uh, which deals with the behavior of robots, whether they have rights or not, and robot ethics, how human design construct, use, and behave towards uh, other beings with artificial intelligence. Computer ethics is the set of ethical principles that govern the use of computers. Uh, ethical problems arising from the entry of information uh, technology into the society, the rules, and morality could be the sensitivity, the ability to gain from experience as a feeling of pain and wisdom. Uh, set of abilities related to higher intelligence, such as self-knowledge. Moral risk of intelligence systems. We are right now where we are uh, building autonomous weapons, and it's a very serious issue. The third revolution related to the field of wars after gunpowder and nuclear weapons and uh, computational intelligence can be used to make the battlefield, the battlefield uh, safe for military persons, but on the other hand, it can, uh, it can have offensive weapons that operate with their own and could result in greater casualties. We have two examples in one way we can use educational uh, technology is the study of ethical practice, and we can have robots uh, working with us. And of course, we can have weapons, self-driving cars, automated unmanned aircrafts, human care robots, or even robots used as servants. So there are certain professional consequences Many jobs will be cut uh, in the future. It's uh, Japan and Asia in general are more using robotics. So we see 1,520 one robots per 10,000 workers, where in the world is 66 robots. And I have a chart about that, how they use it in Asia, Australia, and Europe. And uh, the revolution in computational intelligence is a confrontation between the humans and machines. And is a confrontation of the human mind and the me mechanical thinking and power. There are certain theological implications, transhumanism and metahumanism. What all religions promise, otherwise they wouldn't have any followers, is after life death. Here, we will have in a few years the capability of achieving immort immortality by downloading a brain of a human being into a humanoid. Everything will be artificial except the brain, which will continue to evolve. There will be robots that will be used in relationships between the sexes. And several questions arise here about the morality. In, uh, we have the use of robots in uh, medical that will help in medicine, 
I can tell you right now that technological wise, we are 10 years ahead of the doctors. We can provide technology that they don't grasp it right now, but they will in the future. Of course, besides medicine, we have the military use. And uh, we're talking about unmanned vehicles in the sea, in the air, all over the place. We're reaching the point of super intelligence where machines will be capable to do everything that a human is possible to do, and that's what we call singularity point. Singularity point that we are approaching very rapidly is the point where you will not distinguish the difference between a robot and a human being. So when this happens, and it's just as a point, there are many scenarios that can evolve, and there are many moral questions arisen. Is a robot, is a robot able to understand the impact of its actions? Would anyone trust the machines to make decisions? Should human humans treat the machines as equals or as superior species? Is there such a thing as absolute good or evil? Can we define it? Is our emotions merely a human characteristic? And uh, we have Sophia. Sophia has uh, received uh, the first robot that has received citizenship from Saudi Arabia, but we have other problems as well with uh, robots that do criminal activities. So there are many ethical issues in medical use. Increase ammonia should be well. Well, we, uh, we suspect that life expectancy will be increased by 20 years in a very short period of time. Would parents be happy to trust the children to a robot? Of course, there are much more ethical issues in um, military use, because we, there is a, a thing only about using robots, but also coupling humans with robots and making superhumans. Should human rights be granted to robots if there is no difference? And uh, can they make copies of themselves? Can they declare that to be citizens like humans? And of course, another issue is legal liability. If something goes wrong with a robot, who's responsible? The user or the buyer? The designer, the manufacturer, or your information via the internet. There is no legal frame for liability right now. The greater the autonomy of robots, the less they can be regretted as mere tools in the hands of other entities. So should we, we punish the robots? This is a very classical problem, the trolley problem, which is either a person or a machine. Uh, he has the ability to either uh, have the trolley kill one person or five person. What's the right thing to do? And, when, and how autonomous, if this trolley is autonomous, should do in either case? Is there any registration concerning the robots? They, are, uh, they should follow the three rules of us. Uh, <coughs> Human being cannot use robots unless robots reach the highest legal and professional levels. A robot must be respond to most appropriate ways of human being. Uh, a robot must be able to protect its existence as long as it does not conflict with the first and second law. Uh, there are rules of ethics, there are rules uh, of compute from uh, technical institutes. 
and there must be certain uh, rules to abide, and there are f future proposals uh, in the EU, in Parliament. And as conclusions, I'm, I, I reached the, the end. Laws must be updated. People need to be part of the development. We should overcome the mentality that we do something because we're able to do so. We're approaching a time where machines will take over. Is there of our conscience the computer? Can they follow the principle of our society? 